it's an integral part of a deck, but what building codes are there specifically for decking for a deck? This video is one of many on the Robo Deck Designer YouTube channel. I'm Paul and this YouTube channel here is all about helping you. Helping you navigate the difficult New Zealand building code regulations. I will let you know about little known clauses and design considerations that can prevent you from making mistakes and getting it right first time. But the greatest gift I can give you is the Robo Deck Designer online tool. This online tool will help you design your deck to New Zealand building code regulations within minutes. Well first of all, before we get into this video, I'd like to, just like to apologise that I've had to change the frequency of the videos that I've been putting out on this YouTube channel. So, in the past I put them out every three weeks, but I've had to change it to every six weeks. The reason being is that I'm just getting busier and busier. I really enjoy doing these videos, but it does take a lot of time, so it takes about two days work actually doing each video. So, I'm sorry about that, but these videos will still keep coming anyway. So before we even get into looking at the building codes for decking for a deck we need to look at if this deck is actually part of the main access route into the house. Now these two diagrams up on the screen will actually show just what I mean by this. This does actually affect the um, requirements of your decking for a deck. So with NZS 3604 there's only two clauses in there that actually refer to the, the decking for a deck. Now you might think this is going to be a little bit of a short video but there's a bit more to it than that. So under section 7.4.1.2 there's a little bit in there about the requirements for a deck and under A it actually is more specifically for the decking. With the first clause which is 7.4.3 in NZS 3604 this actually deals with the decking thickness. Now this is all dependent on the spacing of the joist. Now there's a separate video I've actually done on joists. The link is down there below in the description. But also if you are using cantilevered handrails then your decking will need a spacing of a maximum of 400 millimeters. Now with the decks designed using Rubber Deck Designer um, this has been done using a decking thickness of 32mm. Also it's possible to have your decking at 45 degrees from the joist if you're using 400mm centres. This works out to be 565mm centres and at the moment Rubber Deck Designer doesn't actually allow for that but this will change in the future. With the decking, if this is actually at 45 degrees from the joist, this can actually create some quite decorative effects. Now, unfortunately this is only really possible if the joist in the very centre of the deck lengthwise is actually bang on there in the middle. Now, this, in some cases this distance is not possible because um, sometimes you've got handrails that um, get in the way where the joist need to be bolted to the boundary joist and sometimes the handrails in the way so unfortunately sometimes this can't actually happen. Now in NCDS 3604 under clause 7.4.4 there is a bit there about the slip resistance of the decking. Now this is only if you have your deck which is part of the main access route. So the slip resistant value specified there is 0 0.4. Now with grooved decking boards this is between 0.45 and 0.6 so this would actually meet the standard. So for decks which are not part of the main access roof your options are much greater so you can actually have a wide range of boards here you can have different materials. Um, so first of all with the decking materials some of them actually grooved on one side and smooth on the other side so in cases where a deck is not part of the main access route you could mount the, the decking either way. Now there's different opinions on this. If your decking is actually mounted groove side up it's um, more slip resistant, safer, uh, preventing falls but if it's turned around the other way, the smooth side up, then it's easier to clean. So whatever decking material you use it's best actually to work out if this actually meets the New Zealand Building Code requirements and is of the correct grade and treatment. Now with the decking there needs to be a gap between the decking materials and the exterior cladding of the house. Now this needs to be 12mm. 
So this is actually specified in E2 AS1 under paragraph 7.1.1. Also your decking boards need to be spaced out with a gap between each of them, with a gap between 3 to 6 millimeters. Now an easier way to do this which actually having your boards consistent is actually having a few excess um, decking boards with a nail put right through it so you can actually place this in between the boards and just it gets a consistent also with the butt ends, that's the ends of the decking, they need to be like one to two millimetres apart and centred over a joist. Now for attaching the decking boards to a joist, there's no specific size of nails required actually in NZS 3604 or any of the other building code requirements, but for a 32 millimetre decking board I would actually use a 75mm specific decking now, but there are alternatives available to this as well. So it's best to get your decking material ordered well in advance before you actually need it, so you can actually store the timber out of the rain so it can dry properly and your initial shrinkage can occur before it's actually installed onto the deck. Thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to the Robodex on our YouTube channel and we'll see you in the next one. Anyway, thanks.